Hey, hey, we're going to be going over example 2.9 in today's notes. So, here we go. Uh, as you see, we have a skier on a slope. Uh, her mass is 60 kilograms. And we, for part A, we want to know what is her acceleration if friction is negligible. So that means right there that the force of friction is zero. It's not there. And then for part B, we're going to say, okay, now there is friction. We know her friction is 45 newtons, so what would her acceleration be then? And uh, the people that drew this picture were kind enough to include a force diagram right there that we can use. Right? The, the force of gravity, the weight right here, has already been broken up into its perpendicular and parallel components. So we need to redraw this figure with all of its components drawn in. So we're going to do that over here to the left of it. Okay, we have the force of the normal. We're going to just kind of realign it so that it is straightened out a little bit. We got the normal force going up. Okay, we got the force of friction going up the hill. Uh, we have the parallel. And remember we have that right there that is or actually that's the perpendicular component of weight right that's that component right there lined up with the normal force and then we have the we have the parallel component going down the hill okay and remember when we're doing these we want to <clears throat> excuse me we want to use Newton's first law to kind of decide what's happening so in the perpendicular direction Right? The skier isn't accelerating off the hill or down through the hill. So we know that in that perpendicular direction right there, uh, the net force is zero because their motion is constant in that direction. They're not accelerating up or down. However, in the uh, parallel direction to the hill, let's see where to put that. There we go. Uh, we know the skier is accelerating. And so we can set up our force equation here. The sum of the forces in the parallel direction is equal to mass times acceleration in the parallel direction. That would be an expression of Newton's second law. Okay. So to set up part A, let's scroll down a little bit. Part A, if I can find it. There it is. Okay, we're looking at forces in the parallel direction since that's where the acceleration is happening. So sum of forces is equal to mass times acceleration in the parallel direction. And then we can rearrange that to solve for acceleration. Okay, we plug in all of our forces. So we have uh, the weight in the parallel direction minus the friction force is the sum of forces in that parallel direction. So if you look up here on that force diagram, that's these two forces in the direction going down the hill, right? We know the skier is going accelerating in the direction of the hill, so that's why just these forces are responsible for that acceleration. Uh, so we have that. Now, what do we know when we start plugging stuff in? Well, Remember, the friction in part A was negligible, so we make that zero. All right? We know the parallel component, after we do a little trig by solving for that, we know this parallel component is equal to 253.6 newtons. Remember, that's just using trig Sokotoa in this triangle right here to solve for that opposite side from our angle. So we use sine. Okay? And once we do that, we plug everything in and we get our final answer of 4.23 meters per second squared for the acceleration. All right. Now, part B says, what would the new acceleration be if there was a friction force? So, first of all, just a little thought process before we go. If there is a friction force resisting that skier's motion down the hill, then they're going to be accelerating less, right? We have this same force pulling it down the hill, but now there's some force resisting their motion too. So they're not going to be accelerating as much. 
So for part B, all right, now the friction is 45 newtons. So we set it up the exact same way. Whoop. Uh, we set it up with Newton's second law. All right, we solve for acceleration. Uh, we have the same expression because it's the same force diagram that we're using. The only difference is now we do have a friction force that we could plug in right there. Okay, so we have the parallel component of the weight minus the force of friction, and it's taking away from that force because it's pointing in a different direction. It's counteracting it. Divided by the mass of 60 kilograms, and when we plug that in, we get to a final answer of 3.48 meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. Okay, so conceptually it makes sense when there is friction resisting that motion, you're going to have a smaller acceleration, uh, but the process is really the same. Okay, so I hope this helps. Remember, if you have any questions, leave a comment, ask me in class, and I will see you tomorrow.